Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we'll be making a jump boost. So I'm going to start by showing you how this is going to look. So I have a green part in the background. When my player touches the green part, then he has a jump boost. And then after three seconds, then it goes back to the normal jump. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing started and see how we can code this. So to get started with jump boost, the first thing I'm going to do is add a part into the game. To do that, I'm going to come up to the top and click on the blue cube. In this video, I'm not going to be getting much into the design part of this, but you can design this part however you'd like. The next thing I'm going to do is add a script onto this part. So I'm going to go over to the explorer menu and then add a script. Let's go ahead and start by getting rid of the print hello world message. And now let's go ahead and start writing our code for the jump boost. The first thing I'm going to do is say local part is equal to script dot parent. All this does is it links the script to the part that we're writing it for. Next I'm going to make a variable called boost. So I'm going to say local boost is equal to 150 to start with. This 150 is going to be the value for the jump boost. So if you want it to jump higher, you would change this to a higher number. If you don't want it as high, then you would change it to a lower number. Next, I'm going to be making a function. So I'm going to say local function. The name of my function is going to be jump. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put body part. On the next line, I'm going to say local humanoid is equal to body part dot parent then colon the word find first child inside the parentheses I'm going to put humanoid with a capital H okay then on the next line I'm going to say if humanoid so if it was able to find a humanoid part based on the body part dot parent so in this function so far, what I'm doing is I'm using the body part that touches the part and I'm saying dot parent to find the character that it's attached to. And then I'm trying to see if this character has a humanoid part down here. If humanoid just means if it finds that humanoid part. So I have a character. Then I'm going to say local current jump. And this is going to be equal to humanoid dot jump power so what this does we're setting a variable called current jump and then we're storing the humanoids current jump power the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if current jump is less than boost so what this is checking it's seeing if my current jump power is less than my boosted jump power if that's true, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my humanoid jump power equal to boost. Jump power is equal to boost. So this will change my humanoid jump power to whatever value I have stored up here. After that, I'm going to wait for some time. I'm going to choose three seconds, but you can change this to whatever you like. So basically what this wait block is doing it'll give them um, jump boost and then after a certain um, number of seconds then it'll take it away so after this wait block what I'm gonna say is humanoid dot jump power is equal to current jump power so quickly just to go through this one more time if the current jump power is less than boost which would mean he doesn't have jump boost right now then I'm going to set the current jump power for the humanoid equal to boost, which is the value up here. After three seconds, then I'm going to set its jump power back to the normal jump power. Okay, that's all we have to do for the coding. Just kidding. We have one more thing we have to do at the very bottom. We have to link this function to a touched event. So I'm going to say part dot touched colon connect and then the name of my function, which is jump. Now that's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and test this out. 
Okay, back in the game, fingers crossed that everything went well. So let's go ahead and move my character over the block. And I jump and I see that I have jump boost. And after three seconds, then I'm back to normal. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead and now we'll take a look at some other things we can do with this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna add to this is just a few lines of code that when I touch the block, it'll disappear. And then after three seconds, it'll reappear. So this is what it's gonna look like. So I'm going to run into the block. It disappears and I have jump boost. And then after three seconds, I lose my jump boost and the item reappears. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the script and see what we have to add to make this work. So I'm gonna go back to the script and there's just a few lines of code that I have to add. So the first line I have to add is right under the if statement and it's this line right here. This says part.transparency equals one. What this line of code does, it just makes the part invisible. The second line of code is right below it. This one is gonna make it so that the block can't be run into anymore. And then down after the wait time, so after the three second wait time, I'm just basically gonna be reversing these two lines of code. So I'm gonna say part.transparency is equal to zero. This will make the block reappear. And then like before, I need to set part.canCollide to true. So before it was false, so I'm just reversing it to true now. And that's all we have to add to make this work. So with those lines added, what you'll have is a block that disappears when you touch it and then reappears when it's ready to give the player jump boost again. And while we're on the script for this part, let's go ahead and change this boost value so you can see what effect that has on the, the jump boost. So instead of 150, I'm going to double it and change it to 300. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it and then run my code again. Okay, so now I'm back in the game and what I should expect is a much higher jump boost since I changed the 150 to 300. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm going to jump and I can see that I'm jumping much higher. All right, let's have some fun with this and we'll make it a crazy number. So instead of 300, let's go for 1,000. All right, let's go ahead and run the code again and test it. So this time it went from 300 to 1,000. All right, going to jump in three, two, one. Whoops, I missed it. All right, jumping. And I can see I jump really, really high. All right, it's probably gonna take me a while to get back down here. Falling, 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 and back. All right, and just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and go crazy and change this to 10,000. Because why not? All right, it's running the game. All right, this is with a jump boost of 10,000. And still going up and up and up. I think I'm still going up. Looks like I'm falling back down now. And splat. Oh, I bounced. Oh my goodness. All right, and there we go. All right, so this is something fun you can add to your game. You can make it crazy with a super high jump boost or you can just keep it somewhere in the, the normal range. This is gonna be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.